to draw any preliminary design at its very preliminary stage google earth can be a very important tool right and then the data that you have created in this google earth can directly be imported into softwares such as water gems and some indirect methods it can be then taken to the apanet and further this can be worked upon so now in this lecture what we are going to see is basically how to design a water distribution network with the help of google earth if you don't know google earth i will tell you a little bit basics also on how to create nodes pipes and save things further we will end up creating a kml file which is the general format of a file used in google earth you can use this kml as a direct input in your water gems software however since we are not dealing with water gems software so we will not be showing any demonstration of the same but the process is very simple you can use the files given in the description of this video after completing this video you can use this file and keep it as a background in your water gems and using the model builder you can draw the networks if you don't want to use model builder you can use it as a background and draw the network on it and then to extract the elevations you can use the t-rex function so what i will do is i will give you all the necessary files of this video in the description below and you can download it and use water gems to design that for the purpose of this course and this video i will be explaining both the methods apart from the software part and for the software part we will do this design in epanet right so without wasting much time let's start so now as a physical site visit is not possible therefore what we will do is we will do a virtual site visit and after inspecting the various parameters we will try to establish a small network and if that small network works then extrapolating the entire network we can build the water model for an entire city okay so let's move to any city of your choice uh, since i cannot interact with you right now so uh, let us go to a city in india called as pune it is a very big metropolitan city and uh, it already has all the amenities but still since we are considering pune because it has all kinds of features it 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 has highly dense population it has some open lands and it has self sufficient water supply systems so we are going to pune okay so uh, this software on which we are working is google earth so for locating any so place on this you simply have to type the name of that place in the search box and it will pop up then we zoom at this place uh, now just understand a thing this is a highly populated place okay suppose we want to provide some water in a place called uh, budhavar pet and uh, to be precise maybe we want to construct a um, oht let's say here here we want to construct a oht okay so here this point will be our point of supply where the water will be supplied okay so now generally water gems needs three to four things the first thing is location of all the points then the second thing is coordinates and then uh, it also needs the demands okay and similarly epanet also needs the same things okay this is our point of supply in the city okay and now let's check what is its elevation here so its elevation here is uh, 562 meters as you can see from the right hand side bottom side okay so its elevation is 562 so we simply uh, name it as 500 and we simply name it as 562 
okay now the name uh, that is the elevation uh, the latitude and longitude everything has been recorded okay now moving on uh, we have to locate a water source okay so these uh, location of water sources are actually done with a different kind of process but since we are assuming that we have already located a water source what is our work as a hydraulic engineer as a hydraulic engineer you have to make sure that the water reaches from your source to destination okay so source study and all those things let us assume that it has been done and for our uh, this project let's consider a nearby water source okay this is some stream that we can see uh, i don't know how polluted it is okay but let's see let's consider that from this source we can take water okay so for that purpose we will first con construct a intake structure here okay and then we will construct a oht or a pumping system uh, depending on the level difference so just see the uh, elevation here it's 562 and what is the elevation in this river it's a 542 which means a difference of approximately 20 meters so if there is a 20 meter difference so either we can give a pumping or we have to build a overhead reservoir again that overhead reservoir also needs to be pumped of at least 20 meter height but uh, this 20 meters is a difference between the two points but we are not accounting the frictional losses so if we account the frictional losses that will be much more okay so we will let us consider that this is the starting point from where we can start our network okay so what is the elevation at this point it's showing approximately 554 okay so we will put 554 similarly we will put nodes at various points this these nodes will also help us to, uh, to interpolate the elevation values for example we have written the elevation value here we will write the elevation value here okay but but what is the elevation value between these points ipanet will interpret it accordingly right so the more number of points that we have between two points the more accuracy of interpolation will be okay so here uh, as we can see the elevation is approximately again 500 54 okay so we write 554 all right now moving on we now try to select a shortest path uh, so that we can reach our 562 point from here we have to reach here okay so maybe uh, this can be a path okay one more thing how will you carry your pipelines will you carry your pipelines through these houses no because pipelines needs to be buried and we cannot break a house and then bury a pipeline and then rebuild the house okay so all these things are done on roads whether it's a high national highway or a state highway or a district road or a small road yeah we need permissions for th those things but we will do it that way only so generally you will see that in any city the pipelines are laid on uh, road side only okay so we just try to put uh, these pins all across the roads uh, by writing their elevation so this is also showing approximately 554 for anybody who is not understanding how the google earth works i will just repeat it first open google earth then you type the city wherever you want to design okay or if you have the coordinates you can also put the coordinates once it's once it goes there you just choose a path okay now i am just using the pin way i will put a pin all across the path but the other way that you can do is uh, you can simply select a path uh, now this will create a line okay so we our line starts from here and then just keep joining all the points so all the points where i will click the cursor these things will later become a node okay so i'm trying to put all the straight lines without any nodes so we are slowly moving towards our target see wherever we are uh, seeing a bend or intersection we are giving a node now here so i think this route will be the shortest one instead of going this way so we will try to i think this is a road so we will try to give this the final touch 
all right so we have completed our path okay and uh, let us say that this is our pipe line all right now this pipeline is actually not very visible so we can make it visible by going to this style and color box and choose some fancy looking color let us say yellow oh no we are representing water so we will choose blue here then the thickness from one you can choose uh, eight and that you can see that thickness has increased very well now this is our pipeline and that we are going to draw now what we need to do is at various interpolating places we just need to give some pins with the elevations so that our interpolation can be done smoothly and obviously accurately so here the elevation that we can see is again 554 okay again we take a new pin and uh, then again we can see that here also the elevation is 554 okay so nearby the places are elevation are 554 only so we take some far away place here the elevation is 556 okay so from here till here the process will be repetitive so you can just use the time stamp given in the description and move directly to that point where we have completed this uh, intersection uh, others can continue watching this here the elevation is approximately again 556 now similarly we go for these things so the elevations are not changing much nearby so we can just go a little bit farther and then see what effect does it make okay so here it has changed to 560 we can interpolate one more in between here the elevation is 560 again okay all right so we are moving close to our target of 562 will put a place mark directly here so this is again your 559 you might be seeing that after uh, some uh, now from here to here it has increased from here to here it has decreased so cities are not built in a uniform way okay it will never happen so you will have some undulations some up lows so therefore water should travel in pressure okay so that it can counter all the adversities that uh, can happen in its path and what will be the amount of pressure we will cal calculate it in apanet we'll do it its analysis in water gems okay now here uh, maybe this is our final point here the, again the elevation is approximately 562 all right so we are done with making our model so we have done a site visit i don't know what river it is because its name is not written it is mutha river okay so from this river we are taking the water to a colony called oh, some colony we are taking mm, rameshwar chowk okay so this place we are trying to construct a, a, a overhead tank and let us assume for this design that the capacity of this overhead tank uh, is approximately 1 MLD okay now what we do is we export all these things that we have make now exporting things from Google Earth can be a headache at time so this is how you need to do wherever you have made this model go to the first pin that you have right click here and choose add folder okay now when you it will ask you to name something so you can just name it as model okay once you have named it press ok what you have to do is you have to put all these contents of this place in this folder okay otherwise these things create a lot of problem okay so everything that is outside this you have to put it inside the model okay because this way your work becomes so easy and other layers uh, which you have previously worked on 
or which are not required will not be imported so your file will not become heavy you just select all these layers and move it in model okay so now we can see that everything has been moved to model now once you have done this you just right click again here and select save place as wherever you want to save you can just save uh, i already have a thing called model here so i will just rename it as model underscore one okay so now this is saved one thing i would like to remind you that this is saved in a format which is popularly known as kmz okay that is a format used by google earth but water gems will not accept these kind of formats so you have to convert this kmz into a format that water gem recognizes you can watch the next video that is there in this series and you can convert a kml into dxf and other formats now in the next part of this video we will discuss how to convert this kml into a dxf format this is particularly useful for people who are going to use water gems although we will not see the demonstration of this model in water gems and then once we have converted it into a dxf in the next video we will see the design of this network in epanet right i hope you are getting some idea you can watch both the videos that is mentioned on your screen from this playlist if you are still not a member you can become a member the details of which are given in the description below thanks for watching have a very nice day